Hi, this is Pedia Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com, and this tutorial is how to install SmartFlock Server 2X on a Windows machine or a Mac machine. Uh, first off, let's go ahead and we'll head to the website, which is smartfoxserver.com. And when you're here, just go to the products link and click the SmartFox Server 2X. And of course, while you're here, I recommend that you do all the reading, but uh, to keep this video short, you can either go to the download link here or click here. And of course, you can read through all the what it gives you and everything else. And then download the version you want. I'm going to be getting the 64-bit Windows version and the Mac version. And while you're here, also grab the, the patch. And I've already got all these things done, so I'm just going to close this window and open up my Finder. And here we go. Here's where I've already downloaded all my things. And first thing I'm going to do is copy the Windows versions over to my running Windows. Uh, let me see. Well, so we'll just copy this over. And I'm going to want the Mac version on my desktop. So I'm just going to double click, unzip it. I'll put it on my desktop and the patch as well. So I now have a copy of the patch uh, on my Mac side. And for my Windows... I'm just going to copy it over so I have a copy there as well. So here we are in Windows. Uh, we've got SmartFox Server 2X and the patch. I'm going to shrink Windows down. And here we are on the Mac side. I have everything I need here. So let's install on the Mac side first. So you just double click it and double click again. It'll open up a dialog box. I'm going to close that down. Uh, put your password in. Uh, if you're using a Mac, I'm sure you're used to that by now. So it's going to ask you where you want to install it uh, after you accept the license agreement, of course. And this actual installation, I want to be able to share this across a few different computers I have in the house. So no matter which one I'm at, I can still get to this particular installation of SmartFox Server. Uh, this is going to be my local one. So you can choose the default if you want. Uh, I'm going to change mine a bit because, like I said, I want to share it. I'm actually going to throw it in my Dropbox. So if I hit OK... And I'm going to change the name of it. Uh, so, yep, yeah, right there is where I want it. So I'm just going to hit Next. And you have the chance to run it as a service. Uh, these machines that I'm going to be running it on, I do not want it to actually run as a service. I want to actually manually click to start it up. Uh, if you have it installed as a service, when you start your system up, uh, SmartFox Server 2X is going to start automatically. And that's not exactly what I want for this one. Now, on your production site, where you're actually going to be running it for, well, for real, uh, you'd, you'd probably want to enable that. And we'll just, when we do the Windows install, we'll enable it, and I'll show you what it, how it works. But let's just hit Next. Now, it's going to go ahead and install all the files that it needs to run. And I'll pause the video while it does that, and we'll come back to it when it's done. So here we go. It's finished installing, so I'm just going to click Finish. And I'm going to go ahead to the folder where I installed it, which was in my Dropbox. And here it is right here. And I'm going to take that patch file, drag and drop that right in. And while I'm here, I'm just going to actually eject that. And let's also clean up my desktop a bit. There we go. So let's go back into uh, the folder, uh, our patch, sorry. And they do have a uh, release notes here. And if you open that up in a browser, it's going to tell you how to install the patch. Uh, right now, I'm just going to go ahead and if you have Java installed and if you're running on the Mac operating system, you will have it. You can just double click the uh, patcher.jar file and it's open up this little dialog and it's going to show you everything that it did. And then just click exit and we're done. Uh, if you don't have Java, say you're on a Linux installation, uh, go ahead and run this here from your command line. And of course, this one here is for Windows if you want. And there's a a no graphics version uh, tag you can put on uh, but we'll just uh, well we don't really need the patch in here anymore but I'm just gonna leave it in the folder uh, what I want to do next is actually start it up just to make sure it's running so I'm gonna come down to this folder and here's the icon here to start it up if you're not running it as a service so I'll start it up it'll go through and do its thing I'm just gonna make the window a little bit bigger and you'll know what it's done because uh, right at the end it says ready right there and of course if you're having any errors or problems while it's running you should go ahead and read through this 
So we see, you know, the license is My Community Edition. You get 100 free connections with it. And that's all there is to it. If I shrink this down and we go and open up a browser and we go to our local host and at port 8080, uh, you'll get this documentation. Now you can run the launcher tool or the administration launcher. And you'll notice that the default password is SFS admin. And we can actually just go to the bookmark and load up the bookmark. And this will fill out most of it for us. And I'll just cut and paste the password in. And it's going to warn me that I'm using the default password. And that's fine. And of course, you come in. We'll go over this in a different tutorial. I just want to make sure that it's running. And if you notice up here, I've installed the patch. And I'm now running RC2A. Uh, without the patch, it's just RC1. Now, I believe there was an RC2B uh, out. I was reading about it on the forums. I'm not sure if it's out yet. I didn't see it on the download page. So... Anyway, that's it. You have all these tools to go through and, you know, administrator chat if you have more than one admin on. Uh, but let's close that down and go ahead and take a look at the Windows installation. So I'm actually just going to close this down as well because I don't really need it anymore. So I'll just hit cancel. Uh, you'll notice it goes through, does its thing. You'll have a quit button here. If you quit, it's done. Actually, there was one thing I wanted to do while it was still open. And there was actually an easier way to do this, but... You notice how much faster it starts up the second time. I'm actually going to lock this to my dock. So when I quit, it's always there. So it's just easier for me to get to. So there we go. We'll just quit that. I'll shrink that down. And I'm going to head into Windows now. And I'm actually just going to go into full screen mode for Windows. That'll be a little bit easier to look at. Uh, I'll move a few things around. So let's go ahead and launch it for Windows. So it's going to go ahead and prepare to install. And you're going to get pretty much the exact same dialog that you got for uh, the Mac OS version. So I'll just hit yes. I guess we could have right-clicked and tried to install as administrator. But let's go through. Again, read the license agreement. Hit next. And actually, if you go back here and you read, um, it has issues, uh, permission issues. So it recommends that you install it under users and some username so we're going to do that so we're going to go in hit uh, browse and I'm just going to come up to my users and I'm just going to select this is actually my uh, user for uh, this Windows account so I'm just going to go ahead and pick that you know maybe yours is you know like Bob or Sam or whatever you put in for your username mine is Windows so I'm going to go ahead and set OK and again I want to rename this I just like having the while not having the version number at the end. And everything's okay, so I'll hit next. And it's going to create a shortcut and everything else for me. That's fine. I'll hit next. And this one here I'll install as a service so we can take a look at the service features on Windows. And I'll just hit next. And it's going to go ahead and install. Uh, while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and stop the tutorial and uh, we'll come back once it's done. All right, so it's done installing now. So I'm just going to click finish. Uh, I'm just going to move this off to my trash can because I don't need it on my desktop anymore. Click yes. And I want to drag my patch over to where it's installed. So I'm going to go in. Uh, let me see. It's under my boot camp partition, users, uh, windows, and right there. And exact same as the uh, Mac version. We'll open that up. And I don't have Java installed here, so I'm going to use the bat file. So I'm just going to right-click and run as administrator. And it's going to ask me, you know, do you want to allow the following program to make changes to your computer? Yes. And it runs and it's done. So let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, actually, it already is running. We run it as a service. And you can check by going over here, right-clicking on computer. Uh, let's go to manage. And that'll open up your little uh, managing window here. And I'm going to get down to services and applications. Click on services. And these are listed alphabetically, so you should just be able to scroll down to your SmartFox server. So we'll just keep going down. And here it is right here. And of course, you can stop it, pause it, restart it, and everything else. Uh, I've already done the patch, so let's go ahead and try to go to the website. So again, it's still on localhost. And the port is still 8080. 
Uh, I haven't used um, Internet Explorer here yet. Uh, let me just go make sure that this is actually running. It says it is running, so I'm just going to quickly restart it because it should have worked. Uh, so here we are. We're at the uh, local host, and I'm just going to click the tool to launch it again. And uh, internet settings don't, okay, yeah, yeah. I'll just go to bookmarks. And by, I'm not sure if I covered bookmarks yet, but your local host is automatically stored by default. And if you click it, you'll get most of the stuff filled up for you. And I'll just type in the password that it gives you, of course. Uh, these passwords are right here, your password and username. And we'll just hit connect. And when you go in, you should pretty much see the exact same thing. There you go. So that's how you install uh, SmartFox Server Pro on Windows and on a Mac. So I hope that helps. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn that service off, but I'll, I'll do it after. I'll see everyone later. Bye-bye.